Hello, beautiful day here. We are going to, what we've done here is we've caught a swarm the other day and we've been having a lot of requests on how to install a five frame nuke box into your box at home. And so most of you will have 10 frame boxes here. This is a five frame we're using. It's the same thing, it's just half the frames. Uh, with the smaller boxes, they do grow just a little faster. So we'll put them in here a little bit. It's a small swarm. So let's go ahead and start our, we're going to put bees. You just got home, you have your nuke box with your bees that you just bought, and we're gonna put them in your hive. So let's do that. And actually we're gonna switch this out and probably put these girls in an eight frame so they can have a little room to grow. All right, we have switched this box out real quick with an eight frame. So we're gonna take our nuke we purchased and put it in our hive at home. So the important part is to put this in exactly the same way that you got it into this hive. Now, that's for you to remember. I'm gonna be doing a little bit different here because this is a very small swarm we caught. And when I would sell a nuke, it's gonna be full of bees you're gonna have at least two frames probably of uh, cat brood you're gonna have some honey and some more resources and then usually a frame that's drawn on a little or kind of blank because when the bees come in and they crowd in these if there's not enough room for them to hang in here and there's too much they'll actually die so you have to keep them a little, just the right amount all right, I'm gonna take this frame here and you can see we're starting to get into the bees and I'm gonna place it right over here. It's just an empty frame. Another empty frame here. This is an eight frame, so if you have a 10 frame, you'll be adding five extra frames. And you just put them on the sides and keep this kind of in the middle. So we're going to gently lift straight up so that we don't crush or hurt our queen or any of our bees. And I'm just going to do a quick inspection here. When I'm inspecting, I am looking down the frame like this. When you're inspecting, if you look straight at the frame like this, you don't have a depth perception and it's really hard to see the queen. Now that's okay if you want to check and maybe see if she's been laying in there. But when I'm looking for queens, I'm looking down the frame like this and I'm doing a scan from one side to the other and she's not there. I'll then flip it over and I'll give it a scan and I don't see her. We've got some bees drawing out some wax here very nicely. One thing to notice, I'm handling this wax frame gently. You can see this has just some string here and a wax sheet that they built on. This is not plastic foundation. These do come in new. So when you're inspecting frames that are just wax, you want to hold them like this. The strength of wax is like this, not like this or this. If this is heavy and it's warm out and there's a lot of honey in here and you tip it like this, that thing is going to fall out of there. So when you inspect wax frames, you need to hold the frame like this. And you can look like this and rotate it this way. Now at the moment, there's nothing in this and it's very light and I'm not worried about it breaking. And that's why I did the inspection the other way. You can tell these are nice bees we have. They're not flying, they're not aggressive. You can just kind of pet them a little bit. They're very nice. Okay, here we go with the next one, straight up, not hitting the sides. And this is plastic foundation, so I can just be a little bit more rough with it. But don't be rough with your bees. They'll let you know right away if you're handling them too rough. You'll start getting warnings. All right, looks good. They've got it drawn out. They're bringing nectar in. The honey flow is starting. And nice, fresh drawn wax. That's going to be a good place for a queen. If you have some fresh drawn wax, and uh, that's usually where you're going to find your queen. That old stuff, they'll lay it out, but when they have fresh wax, that's what they want. All right. I'm gonna 
place this back down in here. And it looks like our queen may be in here. You can notice there's a little bit of a ball here. And a lot of times they'll ball around a queen or something with something going on. So with the rest of the bees, you just turn your box upside down gently, just like this. And then you just hold it and give it a nice brisk. You heard the sound, that's about right. You'll notice you know, the bees are mostly gone. They're all kind of laying right here. And I'll try to see if I can find the queen here. I don't know what they're what they have going on, but more than likely there's more than two, there's probably more than one queen in this box. And uh, that's why we're seeing a little fight. So may the best queen win. The rest of the bees are knocked in now. To kind of boost their numbers up, they haven't had any bird yet. So what I did is brought them a little surprise from another strong hive I have now. Like I say, this is the advantage to um, having two hives or multiple hives when you start because say one's weak and it swarmed and you have trouble, you need to boost these guys up. Now that was a warning, he just come and kind of landed on my hand. When you go to dumping them, they don't get too happy. Okay, so look at this beautiful cap brood. This is all baby bees. It requires no more care. They're sealed over and they'll be hatching within less than a week. And uh, we've got nurse bees here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place it right here. And the bees that were on it from the other hive, they'll integrate. If they were worker field bees, when they go to collect, they'll come back. They're already, already orientated to the other hive, so they'll go home. The nurse bees, however, will stay here and they'll work this hive. You've got another drawn frame here. If you get your drawn wax, save it. This is so valuable. It takes about 20 pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. Uh, I think that's one ounce of wax. Uh, it's got a little bit of nectar in here already and it's full drawn, so I'll put it in here and the queen will just lay that thing up in no time at all. And that'll all be cat brood in a day or two. It'll all be laid with brood in a couple days. And then let's see, we have two, four, six, seven. We need one more frame. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a piece of wax here. And this one is kind of broken at the top, so we'll skip it. Give them some of this plastic foundation. So another important thing, we're not done. If, you, if we just close this hive, it would be a mess. So what we need to do is get our hive tool in here and get our finger over here and we tighten it up. Same thing over here. Now, the space is even on both sides and the frames are very tight together. If you don't do that, they will take advantage of you and they will build so much burr comb in here, you will, you'll never get these used again. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and get our lid. We don't have inner covers. We threw those away, we didn't like them. So we just put on a hive top feeder and that's their lid now. Here's where the ventilation goes through. And Air is able to come through the vent here because this is screened and it's also a ladder for them to get their feet. These are a dollar, a dollar tree. Here's their ventilation hole right here. And that's where the air flows. Here's an extra ventilation hole right here in our deep box. I run an inch and an eight ventilation hole in all of my deep boxes, you'll notice. Every single one. And I put screen on it, the bees can't get through. In the winter time, we put tape on it to kind of help and we use the really, really good white, super grippy Gorilla Tape. Works wonderful. So they have plenty of ventilation. It's hot right now. If these bees don't have ventilation, they're just not going to do very well. We're looking on the front here. We don't have an entrance reducer. Well, we don't need one right now. If we did put one on it, we would put a stick about from here over, just half of it. And leave them not lots of nice airflow. It's in the 90s right now and it's too hot to restrict and use entrance reducers. You, your bees will leave because it's too hot. They won't even want to stay in there if you don't have enough ventilation. Here's one, for example, that's a smaller hive we've been working. Um, it's being built up, and we have a small entrance reducer in here. 
Notice the hole, it's about four inches. That's all they need because we have ventilation. So if we have to reduce them down, they still get air. The main reason you're gonna use your entrance reducers is gonna be for robbing so that they can have a smaller area to protect so that they can defend themselves. The honey flows on right now. We're not having too much robbing. So we're not having to really worry about it. These bees need in and out and they need in and out fast. Well, there it is, Mila, go ahead and put your lid on there. And Lena, will you go ahead and mark that? So we've got a queen in here. All right, so we've got this marked queen and we put the date on it so we don't forget when we worked it. Brick, Mila, there you go. That means you have a queen. You can just look through here and tell. That means there's no bees in there. If you want it to be, whatever else. An example, that could mean it's a split. However you want to do it. Have a system to help you remember. I like both. Well, be happy.